Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And so uh, we're to remember one another, consider one another. Once you're saved, remember uh, your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, provoke them to, to love and to good works. And encourage them along the way. Exhort one another is what he says in the word. He says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, go up to that brother and sister in Christ and exhort them and encourage them in the faith and say, it's all going to be worth it one day after a while. I know this life can get tough. Uh, this life can get hard. The devil, he tries uh, uh, to, to cause us to, to, uh, to fall and to stumble. The Bible uh, refers to him as being our adversary, the devil. Uh, he, he goeth about as a roaring lion, uh, seeking whom he may devour. And our adversary, the devil, he will uh, try to bring up our past. Amen. Uh, he will try to remind us of things that we once did. Uh, he will try to remind us of things we once said, uh, of places that we once went. Amen. He'll try to remember us of how sinful our past was. But this man, uh, this man named Jesus that I read to you about in, in verse number 12, it says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice uh, for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God. Uh, this morning when somebody sits down, uh, that signifies completion. Amen. When Jesus sat down on the right hand of God, he's saying, I've done the work. I've done exactly what God required of me. And I'm going to sit down on the right hand of God. And I'll sit here until it, it, it's time to bring my children home. Amen. Uh, there's only one time uh, that you read about the Lord Jesus Christ standing up uh, next to the throne of God and that's when Stephen was stoned and Stephen looked steadfastly into heaven and he saw the Son of Man uh, standing at the right hand of God. I believe Stephen was saying uh, well done thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Uh, you've been faithful to me and I know uh, that it's been hard in this life. Uh, the devil he'll try to get us down. Uh, he'll try to discourage us. Amen. Uh, but the Lord, this man named Jesus, he didn't just forgive us our sin uh, but praise God he took away our sin. Amen. Uh, he chooses to remember our sins no more. Uh, he doesn't forget our sins, uh, but he cast them into the depths of the sea. Amen. He completely and wholly does away with our sin uh, so that we can have peace with God. Amen. There's nothing worse than when somebody brings up your past and they try to tell you what you did way long ago and they won't forgive you for that. Amen. When somebody's holding something against you and they say, well, I can't, I can't have fellowship with that individual because they did, they did this to me 25 years ago. Amen. That sounds just like a Baptist. Amen. Praise God, it'd be good if we could get over some things and we could fellowship with one another once again. Amen. The Lord, he wants us to have fellowship. He said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. There's been a lot of people say, what are we going to do on Christmas Day? Are we going to have church? Well, yes, we're going to have church. Are we going to be at the house of God? Amen. Uh, we, we serve the, uh, the risen Savior. We serve him on, on Easter. We serve him on Christmas. Amen. Uh, this is the best time uh, to celebrate the birth of Christ is on Christmas. And, and I don't want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You have an obligation as a child of God, as a member of this church, you're obligated to be here when the doors are open. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, praise the Lord, all three. If, if the doors of the church are open and you're able to be here, uh, you ought to be here. But I think about how we ought not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together because the devil, he's out there trying to cause us to stumble and trying to cause us to fall. He'll bring things to our remembrance. He'll bring things up uh, from our past and try to remind us about things uh, that we once did or things we once said. Uh, he'll try to get you to remember your sin. Uh, but when he does that to you, remind him of the day when Jesus took away your sin. Amen. When the devil tries to bring up your past, uh, carry him on back down, down through the past, uh, down to the time that you got saved. Amen. That time and the place that every one of us ought to have. Uh, praise God, I remember the day uh, when the Lord saved me. Amen. I remember uh, how I felt that day. There's a lot of things uh, in life that I remember. I, I like to reflect upon. There's a lot of good times in my life that I look to look, like to look back upon. Uh, I remember. I love to remember my childhood this morning. Uh, I love to remember grade school and all the friends that I had, all the sports that I played, amen, all the friends I once had. I love to remember uh, spending the night with my grandparents as a kid uh, and, uh, and all the things that we did together and hanging out with my cousins, amen. I remember. I, I love to remember all the churches we've been to, all the churches that Dad's pastored through the years, uh, all the good people that we've become acquainted with. I love to remember all those things. I love to remember all the vacations that we took as, as a family, uh, all the places that we'd go as a family and we'd have a lot of good time together. I remember all the Christmases that we'd spend uh, together down through the years. Amen. There's a lot of things that I remember, and there's a lot of things you remember this morning. If you look back upon, there's a lot of good things to remember, and there's a lot of bad things to remember today. The, the devil, he'll try to get you to remember all the bad things in your life, but praise the Lord, you remind him of all the good things in your life and how God has blessed you. I love to remember the life that, 
uh, we had with, with my mama before she got dementia. Praise the Lord. Uh, she got dementia. She's in the nursing home now, but and, and she don't know who I am. She don't remember my name. She may not even rem remember right now the day that she got saved, uh, but praise God, even though we might forget something, God, he never forgets. Amen. We serve a God this morning that never forgets anything that ever does happen. Amen. The Lord, he records our name in the Lamb's Book of Life when we get saved, and I praise the Lord uh, for my mama. I love her so much, and I it, it breaks my heart to see her get in the condition that she's in, and, and it's going to break my heart this coming week when we go and see her uh, at the nursing home the first time uh, we've ever had to carry your presence to the nursing home and, and, and we bought her something for Christmas but she, she may not even know what we got her and she may forget that we even came but praise the Lord that God he doesn't forget does he God does not forget a child of God once they put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ I've remembered a lot of things in my life there's a lot of dates that I like to remember I remember uh, a lot of things in, in my past that the Lord he's given me an ability to remember a lot of things Amen. For example, I remember in kindergarten what I wore for picture day. I mean, I, I remember those things vividly in my mind. It was a, it was a, a t-shirt that I bought, and, and, and I just thought the world of that bright orange t-shirt. The Lord, he, he, he has allowed me to remember some things. Remember when I got to middle school, uh, we'd, we'd got locker combinations for the first time, and, and, and they give you a locker to put all your books in. Not many students did it, but praise the Lord, I remember to this day what my locker combination was. It was 22, 30, 36. I could carry you right to the locker, and I could open that same locker today because the Lord, he, he, I, don't, I don't know why in the world I remember that. There's a lot of things I love to remember. There's a lot of things I'd love to forget. Amen. There's a lot of things in my head today. I'm like, why in the world am I thinking of that? And, and when I got to seventh grade, Isaac, he, he played football, and he was a grade ahead of me. And, and there was one day that I forgot my lock at the house, and I had to use his locker, and so he told me his combination. And I can still tell you his combination to this day. It's 31, 34, 27. The Lord gave me the ability to hold on to that knowledge, and I, I wish I could forget that. I, I know uh, this morning I've memorized my Social Security number. I've memorized uh, my driver's license number. I lost my wallet uh, two weeks ago, but praise the Lord, I still know my driver's license number. And so if I get pulled over, I can tell the cop, well, this is my driver's license number, and he may not give me a ticket. Amen. Uh, the Lord has given me the ability to remember a lot of things. I remember my birthday. Praise the Lord for that. I remember my second birthday. Amen. The, the day that the Lord saved me. I remember, praise God, one day I do remember the day me and my wife got married. It was July 24th, I think. Ain't, ain't that right, honey? The Lord, <laughs> he, uh, he allowed me to remember that day, the day that she was born, the day that we got married. Praise God. There's a lot of things I remember. I know her uh, social security number today. I don't know why I know it, but she's told me before, and I remember that number. I remember mine. Uh, there's a lot of things that I remember, but there's a lot of things today uh, that I couldn't forget if I tried. And the, the devil, he tries to bring up a lot of things in my past uh, that I do not care anything about. Amen. The devil will try to call to remember some things uh, that I wish that I could forget forget some sins uh, that I might have committed in my past or somebody uh, that I might have offended in times past. He brings those things back to my remembrance and it breaks my heart. And I, I, I worry about a lot of things in my life. <coughs> I worry about a lot of things in my past that the devil, he keeps bringing back to my remembrance. But you know what? God, he, when he forgave me of my sin, he forgave me of every past sin every present sin and every future sin I'd ever commit. That's what kind of God I serve today. That doesn't mean that I have to quit asking for forgiveness of sin. I have to boldly approach that throne of grace every single day to ask for forgiveness of sin. Every single day I've got to go and I say, Lord, I know I'm a, a terrible sinner. I know I've done this, I've done that. Sometimes you've got to get specific with your sins. And that's when it hurts. That's when it really it's hard to swallow sometimes. It's hard when you have to tell the Lord the, the certain sin that you've committed and you say, Lord, I'm a terrible person for doing this, but will you forgive me of this? Will you have mercy upon me? There's a lot of things that we remember. I remember when 9-11 took place. And nowadays, every time 9-11 rolls around, somebody will say on social media, never forget. But I'm afraid our nation as a whole has forgotten what happened on that awful day. If you look at the quarter today, the 2022 quarter, they've turned George Washington's face the other way, whereas used to the face of George Washington would be facing the words, in God we trust. Whoever come up with the 2022 quarter has turned his face the opposite way. I don't know if there's any significance to that, but I think about that and, and how to me it, it speaks volumes to me 
how as a nation we no longer trust in God. We don't have faith in God. We don't look to the Lord for guidance and for direction. It seems as if a lot of people in this world, they, they have no concern for their soul. They have no concern for the house of God. They have no concern for Christian people. There's Christians today that, that, are, that are not very uh, warm Christians, if you'd have it. They're very lukewarm, amen? And they have no desire to serve the Lord. They want the Lord to be there for them in the hard times, but they don't want to serve them in the good times. They want to use them as a spare tire. And our nation has, in a time when we should remember how much God has punished us in days gone by, we tend to forget those things. But God has, has given us an ability to remember today. And, 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 you know, not only do we have the ability to remember, but God, he remembers as well. We ought to remember the Lord, amen? The Bible says that God remembers us. God remembered Noah in Genesis chapter 8. and chapter 19 of the book of Genesis, the Bible says God remembered Abraham. In Genesis chapter 30, God remembered Rachel. The Bible says he hearkened unto her, and he opened up her womb. And so he remembers individuals throughout the word of God. But then Jonah, when you get to the book of Jonah, he says, Jonah speaking, says, When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. Amen. And so we have an obligation to remember God just like he has remembered us. Because he's had mercy upon us. And I think about that thief on the cross. He said, Lord, he said, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Amen. Remember me when you come into your kingdom and have mercy upon me so that I can have a home in heaven. I know that I've had a terrible life, but praise the Lord, you've been good to me. Amen. And you've allowed me the space to repent and put my faith and trust in you. He said, Lord, remember me when, I, when, when you come into your kingdom. And we're told in the book of Ephesians chapter number 2, the apostle Paul tells us, he says, Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers uh, from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But he said, But now in Christ Jesus you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. He's saying look back on your past and remember what God brought you from. Amen. Remember the place that he brought you out of just like he told uh, the children of Israel. Remember at one time uh, you were in Egypt's bondage, you were bound up uh, and you were slaves, but now I brought you into the promised land. Amen. Remember where God has brought you from and where he has brought you to. Amen. If you do that, you'll, you'll be able to rejoice today. You'll be able to rejoice in the Lord if you remember where he has brought you from and what he's brought you to. You may have went through a lot of things in life and you wonder why you've went, went through certain things, but God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. <coughs> There's one particular day this morning that I'll never forget. The day I got saved. And... Uh, I don't know how many times I've told it since I've been here. But you know what? I, I hope I tell it enough that you'll remember the day I got saved. That you'll remember the date that I got saved. Many of you could quote it already. March 18, 2009, as a, as a 12-year-old boy 13 years ago, the Lord, he dealt with me about my sin. It's a day that I'll never forget it. I may, I may get in a condition one day where, where my brain can't remember some things, but I hope I never forget that day. But if I do, the Lord will remember me. Amen. He'll never forget me. If I ever forget it, the Lord won't forget it. I remember that, that night we went to church. Remember the clothes I had on? I had on a brown American Eagle t-shirt and some jeans and some boots. I thought, you know, I, I was all right, and I didn't really go to church planning on getting saved that night. But I remember a lot of vivid details about that night. I remember going in church, sitting on the back row with several of the young people, and didn't have a concern in the world, and uh, went to church that night and, and sat there, and we had prayer meeting before revival. And Sister Ellen Digby stood up. Many of you knew her. And dear old saint of God, she was a, like a grandmother to me. She had come visit Eastside on Wednesday nights when we uh, went there. And uh, they, they didn't have Wednesday night service where they attended church. And so they would come and be with us every Wednesday night. Brother Eugene Digby and Sister Ellen, they become precious friends of our life. And um, Brother Eugene was actually preaching the night that I surrendered to preach. And she was testifying the night I got saved. And, and what a blessing they were to my life. And, and not long after I'd been here, I was sitting at the, in the pastor's study one day and opened up the desk drawer, and there was a picture of them too. And, and, and I don't know if they had, if this church in one time had supported the Christ, the, the, the Christ in every crisis ministry that they had. But, but I, I think about that, that couple, and I remember vividly the, the, those individuals in my life, how they would walk in church every Wednesday night. And, and, and she had such a contagious smile. If you ever saw her, you would just start grinning from ear to ear because she was that sweet of a lady. 
She was a good person. She was a very godly individual, but she had an influence on my life. I remember people like that that have an influence on your life. If somebody has affected your life in a positive way, you'll remember them for a very long time. If somebody's affected your life in a negative way, you'll remember them for a very long time. But she was one that affected me in a very positive way. And I, I just look forward to seeing her every single week and, and what a blessing it was. But I remember that night when, when she stood up in the testimony service and she turned around. She was sitting up here about where Brother Carl and Sister Karen were. And, and I, I was sitting on the very back pew back there. And she turns around and she looks to all us young people. And, and she says, young people, the most important thing you'll ever do. And she said this with tears in her eyes. Just tears are rolling down her face. She got to testify in the glory of God. She stood up. She said, young people, the most important thing you'll ever do is give your life to the Lord. And when she said that, it seems like the Holy Ghost of God uh, began convicting me about my sin. And it, it felt like a, a, a thousand rocks was on my chest. And I began to just weep and cry on the inside. Not long after, uh, tears began to roll down my face. And I knew uh, God was speaking to me about my sin. He's saying, son, you need to get saved. I've given you time and time again to get saved. And you need to come to the altar and get saved before you die and go to hell. Amen. And the Lord began to deal with me about my sin. Uh, the Holy Ghost was dealing with me and that awful dread came over me. I wonder if you have a day in your past like that that you remember God speaking to your heart. I wonder is there a time and a place in your past where you remember that God, He began to deal with you about your sin. It seems like He crushed the inside of your heart uh, and then He drew you to Him and then He put all the pieces back together. I wonder is there a day in your past like that. Uh, but I remember that time or, or that I ran to the altar. I, you, know, you know, when it comes to getting saved, the very the hardest thing to do is to take that first step. Amen. If you can take the first step, God, he'll take the next. Amen. But I took that first step out of the pew, and it seems like I began to run to the altar. Amen. And I saw my daddy standing up here. Uh, he had a podium, and he had his Bible out, and he was just a weeping and crying. And I ran right past him and got down in the altar. Amen. And I got saved. Uh, glory to God this morning. I'm glad uh, that God, he's still in the saving business today. Amen. I, I'm glad that he's allowed me a time in my past to be saved, and I can remember that on down through the time. And, and I, I can reflect back upon that. Amen. When the devil gets to messing with you, and he begins to get, get on, your, on, on, your, uh, on your case about some things, you just take him back to the day that you got saved. Amen. That, 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 that will get the devil to leave you on quicker than anything else if you have that time in your life where you got saved. But I wonder, do you have a time and a place where the Lord saved you? If you don't this morning, then go, when the devil gets on your case, you can't do nothing about it. But I'm glad I've got somebody to go to. Amen. I've got, a, I've got an advocate on my side. I've got a mediator in my corner. I've got an intercessor that, that's on my side today, and, and he is helping me uh, through this life. And when the devil messes with me, God, he steps in. He says, son, you're a child of God. You can just quit worrying about it. I wonder, do you have a time where th that peace was spoken to your heart and where the burden rolled away getting saved was not coming and, and telling daddy daddy I want to get baptized going to church it wasn't reading the bible it wasn't just getting down on my knees and saying Lord I, I believe that you're God I, I believe that you're God's son it wasn't that it was God showing me that my sin was the problem and if I didn't have my sin taken care of if I didn't have it done away with not forgotten, but he chooses to remember our sins no more when he saves us. But if I hadn't had him speak peace to my heart that night after I'd repented and believed the gospel, I'd be lost in my sin today. I remember the night I got saved. Some of you, the experience of salvation, you may remember a lot of details about that night, but you better make sure more than anything that you repented and believed the gospel and you felt peace come in. I tell the inmates at the jail all the time, what salvation is more than anything is peace. If you can't lay down at night and have peace, then you're in a bad shape. No matter how, what, what kind of position you hold in life or, or what your name is or anything like that, if you don't have peace at night, you're a miserable person. But if you have the peace of God, it passes all understanding. I wonder, do you have to... Do you, can you look back and say this is the time that God delivered me from my sin? Second Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, I thank God upon, he said, when I called remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. He said, I'm persuaded it was in you, your mother and grandmother as well. He said, but I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God that is within me. He said, I, I'm thankful for you, but he's saying, stir up that gift of God that is within thee. Remember back on the time when the Lord saved you. 
He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you in Philippians chapter 1. Paul, he, he was thankful for fellow Christians and fellow soldiers of the cross. And this morning, you can be thankful for the brethren. You can be thankful for everybody that's here. You can thank God for allowing you to be a part of their life and them to be a part of yours. I think about our sins today, though. You might remember your sin. You might reflect upon your sin. But do you have a time where God did away with your sin? Where he took it away to, to never see it again? There are sins that I'll commit this week. I don't always live as close to the Lord as I, as I ought to. But I'm glad the Lord gives us space to repent. I wonder today, is there a time when God took away your sin? When he chose to remember your sins no more? The night I got saved is the most precious night of my life. And I think back on it often. I was studying this morning and Ella walked up to me and I just picked her up and set her in my lap and I began to tell her about the time I got saved. And I know she didn't understand a single word that I said. But I held her in my arms and I prayed over her and I said, Lord, when this baby gets of age, Lord, please save her. Because we're living in a wicked world. We're living in a world where that sin is on every corner. Satan is in every family trying to destroy each and every one of us. And if he could drag you down to hell, he'd do it. And all these kids here today, they need to know that there's a God in heaven that can save them when they reach the age. And I hugged Ella real tight and kissed her. And I said, honey, when, when God deals with you one day, I want you to get saved. And I know she didn't understand that, but, buddy, it, it sure did feel good to say it. That God, I, I knew God was hearing my prayer in heaven. And I know... And I'm persuaded that one day after a while that he'll allow me to see my babies get saved. And I hope and pray that I can see that day. I mean, I, 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 that, that will be the, the best day of my life. I, I hear Isaac say all the time, I hear my brother, he tells me, he says, the best day of my life after getting saved was the day my brother got saved. And, and, and he tells me that, and he tells me how happy he was the night that I got saved. Isaac was just a year and 11 days older than me, but I remember he'd get in the altar and he'd cry and he'd pray over my soul. And he'd pray that I'd get saved. And I just, I couldn't, couldn't stand the fact that I had people all over praying for me. And I was self-righteous. It seemed like I didn't want nobody praying for me. I thought I was all right. But praise the Lord, I had some people that would pray for me. Amen. And, and today, if you've got lost in your family that needs saving, you need to pray over them. You need to pray for their soul. If you don't pray for them, who is, who's going to pray for them? Amen. And I just wonder today, if you have a time and a place that you remember, when God saved you and you have a time to look back upon and how precious that is, then you ought to want it for everybody else in your family. You ought to want them to get saved by the same grace that you got saved with. So this morning, that's all I have on my heart. I don't I know what that's worth this morning. I hope, it, I hope it touched somebody's heart today. If you're lost, you need to get saved more than anything. You need to get saved more than you need your next breath. But I wonder today why we stand, why we come with a song. I wonder, would you want to step out and take that first step and let God lead you to the altar to get saved? You say, preacher, I think I've been saved before. If all you can say is, I think I've been saved, you need to check up on it this morning, amen? You need to get down here in the altar and say, Lord, I don't really know whether I'm saved or not, but let me uh, just pray and ask you, Lord, just show me whether or not I need to get saved. Somebody here I feel like needs to be saved. The Lord, he don't send a message like this for no reason. I believe somebody here has heard the gospel today, and they realize they need to be saved. And what a wonderful time to get saved. What a wonderful time to receive that best gift that's ever been given, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Sunday before Christmas. I wonder why we stand and why we sing. Would you come? Would you come believe the report of the gospel? Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I wonder, would you come? Ask the Lord to save you today. Why?